Good evening. Uh, my name's Rob Shaw. I'm the Chief Exec uh, here at J-Wing. Uh, I'm going to be joined later on by Martin Boddy, our Chairman. Uh, as seems to be a tradition now on the second presentation in our audience is our CFO. Uh, so if we get any difficult questions, Mike will handle those. Um, I'm going to take you through who J-Wing are as a business, how we've structured ourselves, the services that we take to market, the clients that we service and some of the work that we've done. Uh, Martin's going to pick up on some of our um, market conditions right now, our trading within the market, our previous year's trading, uh, and finish with a bit of a view of our current strategy for the future. Um, in a simplistic way, uh, J-Wing is uh, a marketing services business, a consultancy, but our heritage is underpinned by a knowledge of data science, uh, and that's been um, sort of with us since the company was founded. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a breakdown of some of that. More recently, we've also created a marketing technology division, uh, generating new revenues for us through software licensing, uh, allowing us to scale outside of the UK without having to set up propositions uh, around the globe. That was created through technology that we own and have built internally, and technology that we acquired um, through uh, an organization called Bloom last year. Uh, that's been taken to market as Joeing Intelligence, and I'll give you some details about that in a second. Uh, and we're now growing an international footprint. Uh, we've been operating in Australia since 2012, specifically in digital marketing. Uh, we accelerated our growth in Australia last year with the acquisition of a business called uh, Digital Massive. Uh, that was recently rebranded to J-Wing and merged with our existing operation. Uh, Australia is a really interesting geography for digital marketing. Um, it's growing significantly faster than the UK. Uh, UK skills are highly prized out there, uh, and we've seen great growth um, from, from our recent acquisitions. In terms of our exec team, and we've put here a, a practitioner team because um, we've all got experience in our market, be that on client side, agency side, and we've all got a rich heritage with j as a brand. Um, Martin and Andy Gardner, our Chief Strategy Officer, Martin, uh, uh, Andy heads up uh, our M&A activity, uh, were original founders of the j -Wing consultancy business back in 1999. Uh, myself, prior to becoming Chief Exec at j -Wing, I was Chief Exec of Epiphany Solutions, which is our digital marketing business. We sold into j -Wing back in 2014. That still forms the largest division within our organisation. The second largest division in our organization is our consulting business. Our COO, Adrian Lingard, used to be the MD of that business. Mike's been with the business over four years. XPWC assists all of us, uh, and especially Andy, with any of our acquisitions work. So we've all got a rich heritage in our industry and with the organization. We get to work with some fantastic brands in a number of different sectors. And this is where we start to differentiate ourselves from our competition. Many marketing services groups operate as exactly that, a group. They have multiple brands. Um, they have disparate agencies often acting in competition with each other, chasing the same pound from their clients. And we do the opposite. We operate a one company strategy. We actively promote collaboration within our organization. We have our MDs managing each of our individual divisions, working together to create propositions for our clients that create added value and added stickiness. We call it internally two and two equaling five, taking those individual propositions that can be bought and combining them in new ways um, that create extra value for our clients. The rallying call to our staff is to go out and find that plus one, to find new ways of doing that. That attracts new clients and it retains the clients that we've got. We're seeing that paying dividends for us. Of our top 50 clients currently, over a third of them take more than one of our propositions. In digital marketing specifically, uh, in the last 12 months, over 50% of every client that we've won has taken more than one proposition from day one, and we're only expecting to that, that to increase. In terms of the individual propositions, and I'm going to take you through some of these, they broadly fall into four um, with our technology division at the centre of this because it can be sold to multiple services, uh, multiple clients. So we have a performance marketing division. Uh, this is where our Epif Epiphany brand sits. So this is doing uh, search engine optimization, making sure that our clients are appearing top of the rankings on, on search engines like Google. It's managing very large paid search budgets for some large brands to make sure that um, their advertisements are appearing on very relevant search terms. Um, more and more programmatic display. This is the measurable side of marketing. 
our consulting business. Um, we have consultants working. Um, this is where the big data people are based. One in 10 of our employees is a data scientist, uh, and this is where our heritage began. Uh, these people are working on complex data projects for clients across marketing services and also in financial services in risk consulting. And I'll give you some examples of that in a second. We have a brand marketing division. This is where more of the creative work is done, more of the traditional marketing. Um, a, a lot of out-of-home stuff with some very large brands. Also a lot of work on social media and PR. And we have a contact business. Um, we, we've got a contact center in Swindon speaking to people, um, managing web chats, managing email communications, often people that we are also marketing to, marketing to online uh, through some of our other divisions. And sat at the center of that is our new technology division. And I'm going to finish some of these slides later on by showing how we're cross-selling that technology across the different uh, divisions within the organization. So if I start with some examples on performance marketing, so, so as I say, this is our Epiphany brand. Working with organizations like Pandora, we manage their paid search online, we manage their organic search online. Uh, a particular example that I wanted to draw here, uh, we were the first agency in the UK to work jointly with Google and this particular client um, to track in-store visits to their Pandora retail stores and online advertising. This is one of the real holy grails in online advertising. Can I tell when you're online whether you've ever been in my store? We actually worked with Google engineers to track all of the Pandora locations across the UK. Um, we knew based on your mobile phone signal whether you'd been into that store. And in the future, when you were back home searching online, we can market to you differently, whether we know that you already have an affiliation with that particular brand. Um, something that's very unique, it's a credit to our relationship with Google and a credit to the long-term relationships with our clients that we can run those kind of projects. Also working with large retailers across paid search and display search like SCS sofas, and people who are trusting us to manage multi-million pound advertising budgets for them every month. In our consulting business, um, managing big data problems for our clients, a couple of examples. Jet2 Holidays, um, we help them build their customer CRM database. We help them manage that database on a daily basis. We help them manage do all their email marketing. We know every flight that you've been on. We know which seat you sat in. We know if you paid for the meal, if you took out insurance, whether you traveled with the family or with friends. And when we then market to you, we use that data in smart ways to try and target things in a, in, in a really accurate way to make the advertising relevant to you. In financial services, um, we do a lot of work in risk consulting. Uh, one of the terms you'll hear us talk about a lot in the recent times is IFRS 9, uh, which is a new Bank of England um, uh, regulation um, that all the financial lenders have to uh, adhere to. We consult and help them through that accreditation process, one of the most recent ones being nationwide. In brand communications, more of the creative side of our business, uh, I'm a whole boy, born and bred. If you, if you don't, you can tell from the flat vowel sounds. Uh, if you don't know already, uh, this year is Whole City of Culture. All of the creative branding from the logo creation to all of the assets was produced by our creative teams in Sheffield and executed by our marketing teams. Uh, we also work online in very creative spaces. So Pepsi is, is a long-term retained client of ours. Uh, again, promoting their brand to target audiences. In this case, it was to try and increase their Twitter following, um, creating a competition mechanic, fantastic prize, got to meet Beyonce. Um, but running these kind of competitions, that, that doubled their Twitter following um, in a single marketing campaign. Uh, and in our customer servicing, managing the contact center, speaking to real people, um, Collect Plus, you will probably have heard of, very large um, parcel company. Uh, we manage uh, their uh, inbound phone calls, but we also manage their online assets. This is a great example of one of our collaboration clients, because as well as managing the end consumer, we also do their digital marketing. So obviously for them, it's trying to make sure that any of their help pages, any of their self-serve pages, uh, rank very highly on Google, so that if possible, you can avoid that inbound phone call. How do we make money from these people? In performance marketing, in search marketing, typically long-term contracts, 12 to 18 months, people on retained management, um, monthly management fees. That can be anything from six to 50,000 pounds. Great future views of revenues. In our consulting business, um, a smaller number of larger client relationships, typically in framework agreements. Uh, again, good visibility of, of our revenues and then larger individual project work. 
uh, in our brand comms business. Um, this is lumpier. Um, again, we're on larger framework agreements, but we're running individual marketing projects uh, for our clients. Um, and in our contact center business, much longer relationships uh, because we're employing people to be able to service these clients. Lower margins, but long-term income. Uh, and I'll talk about our technology business in a second. So, so in terms of J-Wing Intelligence, creating new revenues um, based on software licenses. We have a suite of individual uh, software products at the moment, typically around marketing technology. This may be helping people manage their marketing campaigns um, in, uh, for paid search uh, in very complex markets. Uh, significant amounts of artificial intelligence powering this, um, automating ser uh, uh, services and uh, uh, products that an individual human couldn't do. Uh, we've already run this for a number of very well-known brands. I'm just going to take you through one particular example of this um, for our um, social media monitoring tool, which is called Whisper. Uh, some of you may have seen this. We've, we've got a video behind it, but we're not going to play it today because we didn't want to risk the technology. Uh, Sky Sports, who is a retained client of ours, was very keen to run a campaign to promote their, um, their support of the English Premier League. You may have seen this advert. Thierry Henry was superimposed onto multiple uh, iconic goals that had happened in the Premiership over a number of years. Uh, it was a fantastic success. It was a, it was a great success on social media. It was a great success for the brand. But actually, it was our technology that guaranteed that success because every goal that was shown in that TV advert had been researched using our technology. So in this case, it's a tool called Whisper. It's a social media analysis tool. It looks for influencers. In the words of RMD there, it turns Twitter into the world's largest focus group. We researched in advance what fan bases would be the most engaged by certain types of goals. And only when we'd researched that and found the 12 most iconic goals was that handed to a creative agency to physically produce an advert. So we've got a suite of different technologies here. So these, these are one of the four of the main components within our technology division at the moment. But what you can see is that each of those products can be adopted by the other divisions within our organization. And it goes without saying that this increases the stickiness of our clients, it enables cross-sell, and it's leading to those numbers uh, of um, increased clients taking more, more than one of our propositions uh, from day one. We're headquartered in Sheffield, uh, just got fantastic new offices there. Um, we've, we're a large employer in the north. Uh, our digital marketing business, Epiphany, is based in Leeds, as is our technology business, J-Wing Intelligence. Uh, we've got offices in London to service our clients in the south. Uh, we've got digital marketing business in Newbury and our contact centre in Swindon. And as I say, over in Sydney, we've got an increasingly growing um, um, proposition there. Uh, and some of these locations have been chosen because they give us great access to people as well. Um, the skill set of the individuals that we recruit is extremely important. It's one of the reasons we've done so well over in Sydney, because we've been able to take some of our UK skills out there. So that's a very brief overview of some of the services we offer for our clients. I'm going to hand over to Martin, and he's going to give you a bit of an overview of our current market that we trade in. Thank you. Evening, all. Um, so looking, looking at the market, then, you know, our sweet spot, as Rob, as Rob has probably alluded to, is very much about digital media. It's very much about data science. So if we take those two, two examples. This, this, this first chart is all around... Um, looking at what's happened historically last few years in terms of um, paid, paid search spend and also programmatic spend, which I think Rob was saying uh, about uh, display advertising, how that's now bought programmatically, bought, bought rather than through sales teams. So what you can see in the orange bars, there's been nice growth um, in terms of paid search, but that's continuing, we're here. We've seen this in our in Epiphany business and, and, and beyond, the, 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 there's, there's growth still to come there. The growth of... Um, Programmatic display advertising has been much, much faster. This has really taken off in the last few years. And in our business, it's the fastest growing part of our business. Likewise, it's probably the fastest growing here. And, you know, you go five years forward, they're, they're largely viewed as being pretty equal. Um, so that's very encouraging for us. I mean, I'll come on to the market softening uh, in different sectors, but that is the trend um, regardless. If you look at... Um, the use of the use of data uh, and data analysis. Data analysis is a big part of what we do. And this is really looking at this chart is looking at so what what senior marketers are looking to spend or have spent on to improve their marketing effectiveness. And marketing effectiveness right now is absolutely key. That's what people are are focused on. 
you won't be able to read that necessarily at the back. It's a good eye test, but, it, but it's all around data analytics, whether it's relatively straightforward or the very complex. And that's good news again for us in terms of our consultancy, but also in terms of our gaming <coughs> intelligence uh, products. Um, just talk about the market more generally. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's something been going on about Europe, apparently. Um, and, you know, I think we are starting to see uh, a little of the uncertainty of, of that affecting spend. Um, the only thing I would say, the only thing we've said, there's nothing, uh, I, I think you can sort of say there's a, a major statement in terms of how the market's performing. We've seen retail soften. We've got a small percentage of retail clients, and some of those have either reduced their, their spend or reduced the length of their commitments. Um, we had an election in, um, in April, and that, as all elections do, delay some spend. But overall, um, you know, we, we, we aren't the WPP uh, of the world. We deal with far more specialists. We're in far more uh, uh, growing sectors. Um, and we don't have those large procurement, procured clients. So, yes, we are seeing some softening of revenues in certain aspects, but we're still seeing good growth in other, other areas. We had a very strong first quarter in growth. We had a bit of a disappointment with uh, some of the retail clients' spend reducing. So, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to say... Where, where, where the overall market is. If I go back to the financial crisis, the last, the last major issue that we had, you know, what you find there is people move spend from, uh, say, above the line media to more accountable media. And digital marketing was a big, a big winner in that whole, whole area. So I would expect to see some of that. And the only thing I would say is talking to clients, everyone's a little bit unsure at the moment. There's a lot of sort of, you know, the, the, the feeling of business confidence is low. G, you know, the, the, the growth we're seeing in the economy is a bit lower, and it's driven by sort of con consumer spend reducing. People are still at that phase of deciding what to do. And, and so I think we'll start to see emerging, you know, a different spending pattern within some of our clients, and that should be to the advantage of organisations like us. Um, the other thing we'll, we, we'll come to talk about is just our resilience. You know, um, Rob has talked about the clients that we have, lots of different sectors, you know, the fact that we get lots of recurring revenue. So all those things mean we're quite well protected against, uh, against that. So some financials. Um, you like financials, apparently. So here we go. And Mike's here to rescue me if you ask me any really tricky questions later. Um, the highlights. I mean, the good news for us, um, last three years, we've had three successive top line, bottom line years of growth. And we're very cash generative, largely because of this recurring revenues that we have. Um, and that's enabled us to pay down our debt nicely. We, we reduced it by a third last year. And all of that, when we're still investing through the bottom line in, in a lot of the technology development that, that, that Rob talked about in Jaring Intelligence. The things that differentiates us, I think, from, um, from many of our peer group are these recurring revenues. You know, most agency businesses, you look forward, you can see about 15% of revenues. You can see it about six weeks forward. Um, for us, we can see, you know, 60% of our revenues... Um, six months forward, if you go back for, for the year, you can still see half of them. So that gives us a, an awful lot uh, better model to plan with and the growth model that we can, that we can resource for. Rob talked about cross-sales. Cross-sales is, is a very hard thing to do. Um, we've worked very hard to create this collaborative model and we're getting good success there. And, you know, we, we don't have high gearing. We're, we've only, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 times EBITDA. So, you know, we, and, and I think that's important in, in, you know, this kind of environment. Some figures at last. You can see some numbers. Well, um, you know, this, this looks back over the last four years. We're bothered about EBITDA. Some people are bothered about other numbers, but EBITDA is how we manage this business because that represents to us the real value in terms of our, our, our trading. And, you know, if you look at this, going back to uh, 2014, 2.3 million. Last year, we'd got up to 4.9 million. So it's over double. Um, last year, then, that increased by 12%. 7% of that was through organic growth. So, you know, it, it's a mix of an acquisition, uh, acquisition strategy and, and good organic growth, and that's really come through the cross-selling. Cash generation, free cash flow. Yeah, that's, you know, we're generating good cash. We've done some deals, so we always should use some of that to pay, to pay those, but net debt is, is in a good position. Share price. Um, the good news is it's going the right way. Um, is it where I want to be? Of course it isn't. It's never where anybody wants it to be. Um, what you've seen there over here is, you know, we've put some transactions that we've done. When we do something, it gives us, gives us a kick, 
Um, and, you know, we, we, are, we have seen growth over time. Our shareholder base, for, for those who don't know, is 63% of it's owned, owned by institutional investors. Um, so, you know, we, we do see some trading on, on the stock, but as I'll come to the strategy later, we need to, we need to improve our rating. We, you know, in terms of the businesses that we, we look to buy, they, they would typically be valued on a higher rating than, than we currently achieve. Dividend policy. Um, we've, um, we want people. I want a reason for everybody to stay involved. We also want um, to bring in some new types of investors. So, this year we're, go we're going to uh, we've announced a dividend policy. So, at the end of the results from from this year, we'll start to look at paying a dividend. I think that's important um, to keep everybody involved and also to bring in some new funds. You know, uh, IHT funds, private uh, client brokers, and maybe some more retail investors, which would be very welcome. Strategy. Um, there's three aspects to it. Innovate, scale, and grow. Innovate is all around the sort of tech elements that we're doing, new applications of data science. We're really at the sharp end of this. So you can think of Jaring really in two perspe perspectives. One, it's a real tech play. We've got, we've got really a pure play tech business, which is all around sort of use of artificial intelligence, lots of clever maths uh, within, within what we're doing. Um, Allied to a services business, which is, you know, it's established, it's growing, it's in an interesting area, it's in digital marketing, it's in a high, in, you know, in a high value sector in that marketing space. But innovation's key, as well as doing our own uh, innovation within Joeing Intelligence. Oops, well, that's good, it's coming to the end. Is that, was that a hint from the back of the room? Um, we're also working with uh, Imperial College, um, using data science to understand how people respond to different creative stimulus. So all this is our tech, people are aware, we're trying to understand the brain patterns, what happens when people are, are, are looking at different creative stimulus and trying to then understand that and then use that within different marketing programmes. It's, it's a real, I mean, this is a really bleeding edge, uh, very exciting. And um, we're very fortunate to have that collaboration. We get lots of interest in it. It's very, very high profile. Scale, um, as I said earlier, you know, our share price, um, is it where I want it to be? No. Part of the reason for that is we're relatively small. Uh, we need to be bigger, uh, but we need to be bigger doing the right thing. So scaling is important. Talked about the UK economy being, you know, growth not being necessarily where we'd like it to be with, with, all, with all the sort of Brexit uncertainty. So, you know, our plan is to scale the business, to scale the business in the, in the fast-growing areas. So programmatic advertising is really interesting to us at the minute. Um, we're also looking to expand in other territories. We've, we started in Australia, we may add to that. But again, looking to get some international revenues because we are seeing faster growth there. Very importantly, when we buy businesses, um, we typically, those businesses aren't typically for sale. You know, we... we Persuade them to sell them to us over lots and lots of beer, typically, and eventually they concede and, and, and we do the deal. But it's, that's quite important, and the quality of the business, we've got a good record on acquisitions, and we'll be wanting to do, you know, our plan is over the next two years to probably do two or three quite sizable acquisitions. And finally, grow. We are really good. In, in, our, in our sector, you know, um, we are really, really good at cross-selling. We want to get better at cross-selling, and that's a collaborative model. So um, that's our strategy. Um, you know, we look at the business going forward. I think M&A is going to be particularly important in the next two years for us to give us that sort of growth, to get our stock to take off, <coughs> to get our rating more where we'd like to see it. Um, but also, then, we're also protected a little more in terms of the things we're doing against the sluggish uh, UK economy. And we get two questions. Perfect timing, or a little bit better. Um, questions, anybody? Gentleman just here with it. Just, could you just wait for the microphone? Oh, thanks. Hi. Um, when was your company listed? 2006. Um, you refer to low gearing. What is the gearing as a percentage of capital employed? It's about 15%. Okay, that is, that is low. Thank you. It was worth bringing Thanks, Mike, Mike along. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> even have that written on the back of your hand, did you? <laughs> <laughs> um, question just down here, gentlemen here. You mentioned planned acquisitions. Yes. 
It's probably too sensitive, but have you got some actually in the pipeline at the moment? And if so, how are you going to pay for them? <laughs> Well, as you'll see, we've not, we're not blessed with a, a, a big stack of cash. So, um, yeah, we, you know, if, if we were to do an acquisition, we'd be looking to do a placement uh, within that. We're very cautious on debt, so we wouldn't be looking to expose ourselves there. You, you'd be looking to place for cash rather than persuade the target to take shares? Yeah, that's been our model. Yeah, I mean, largely because, you know, one of the issues you have with a lot of these groups... We aren't a place where people come to exit their businesses, and that's a problem with a lot of the big marketing agency groups. And I am a testimony to that, selling mine in 2014. So it's not a model we, we want. So we want people to stay with us. And the overhang you create through just granting people shares as part of their deal is, creates real problems for us later on. Um, our typical model when we're doing an acquisition is to leave them with a stake of their business. And the idea is, come and join us. You know, you'll grow faster by being part of J-Wing. And the, the remaining state you get, say 25%, will be worth more than that, the 75% which you sold to us several years earlier. So they would stay as a minority investment? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's, yeah. So, but largely, we rate, you know, it is about raising cash. Is there an earn out then for, for yeah, we typically Yeah, our, our deals are typically so much up front, earn outs on, on, on years two and three, and then to remain there. Maintain that stake on a put and call option. Yeah. That way, people stay engaged. And, you know, it isn't as I said. Well, what we're wanting to do is for people to come and join us to grow the businesses, not to people, not literally a place where people can just uh, come and exit their businesses because it's legend. You know, there are so many examples of that in the in, in the, in the uh, sector. Next question. Hi. 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 Um, when you come to do the placement to do the acquisition, yes, are you going to make? Shares available to retail investors, or is it just going to be institutional placing? I'd like I'd like to get more retail in. Um, you know, we 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 need a, we need the right blend. So I'd like to say yes. Um, you know, it will depend on on what we, what size of the placement and uh, but but I, I would like to do that. Yeah, it is possible. Um, <laughs> the second question: If you're in growth mode, I don't really understand why you want to pay a dividend. Why, why it, spend the cash on a dividend when you could put it to the Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We, we've, I've, I've had that, we've had that question, not surprisingly, quite a number of times. Um, th the reason is two, twofold, really. Um, the, the first one, what I said was, is a reason to stay involved. The team I've got here, I mean, you know, the broader team, you know, a, lot, a number of these people have been with me for 20 years. Um, and, we, and the team is very well established. There's a reason for us to stay. People are incentivized to stay. Um, you know, investors. Uh, you know, are investors incentivised to stay? Is a, is a question because I want people to stay involved. I want people to continue to be part of the journey. Um, the second thing is, I want to bring new investors in. So, you know, there are several barriers to bringing certain investors in. You know, in terms of you know market cap and, and dividend. You know, if we if we reduce if we introduce a dividend, um, then we will start to bring in a new category of investor, and that's that's going to be important if we're going to grow as we want to. <coughs> If you did want an easy way to get retail investors involved in placing David Mutton at the back there, primary bid. <laughs> yes, we've had a conversation. Yeah. Good, good plug. Good plug. It's a fight, another fight. That is interesting. interesting. <laughs> right. Gentlemen, just here. Thank you. Um, how do you solve the problem that good acquisitions are going to be more expensive than you are? By the deal structure, actually. It's by the way we why we've done the deal structure. Um, so that's managed to make the deals accretive, um, not immediately, but, but within a relatively short time period. And that's really our challenge. You know, if you look at, us, if you look at a business of our quality in the market, if we were a private business and, and, and doing an M&A activity, we would attract a far higher value than, 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 than we are currently, uh, our current market cap is. But it is about the deal structures. And, and I think that's, you know, that's, we're quite cute on that. But it is difficult to um, get certain deals away. You know, buying a, a tech company is very difficult because that then can't be accretive. A lot of those businesses don't make money. The people involved in, in, in our business, you know, we've come from different corporates. I'm in my, I was first director of GRA. You've got to make money. My, that's why I say EBITDA is everything to us. We're not a company that looks, looks at the top line and just grows it as fast as we can. It's got to be that, it's got to be that profitable growth. So that's, that's, that's important. If you could get the, um, the business growing organically at a faster rate, your shares would be higher rated. And it'd make life more easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, we are, we are growing. I mean, that, that rate of organic growth 
in, the, in our area is high. Um, you know, if you look at, for example, I mean, we take WPP, lovely to compare it against them. I mean, their, their, their net sales rate would be, well, it was 3% uh, last year, to, you know, and, and it's less now. So, you know, that's a relatively high rate. The, the issue I think we've got on, on is really the scale of the business, you know, in terms of getting our rating, scale and liquidity. So we need to do something like that. We've got lots of investors who really want us to do something, our institutional investors. They like the team, they like the, the area. So, you know, get on and do something is, is, it has been the message loud and clear. And do you know what, what is the free float? Well, our institutional, our institutional investors are, are 63%, so. Right, thank you. You mentioned about organic growth, interestingly, WP were down 7% organic, and Omnicom were down 7% organic as well. So yeah. it shows you that just through acquisition, they can, they can not fudge their figures, but they can make it look better. Yeah, they? yeah, and I think, I think it's, um, I mean, there's pro probably a structural issue as well as sort of yeah. some, some softening of the market as well there. So. Gentlemen, again. You mentioned dividends. I'm an investor that likes to see companies that pay dividends. Yes, good. It brings on to the question of what are your long-term <coughs> ambitions for this company? Do you want to stay as an independent and get bigger than WPP or <laughs> um, and yeah. emulate Martin Sorrell? Or do you want to um, sell out at some stage to um, whoever? Well, clearly, world domination is everybody's game, isn't it? Surely, surely. Um, but no, but no, 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 yeah, no, no. We would be pragmatic in that. I mean, we this business does need to scale, and you know we can, uh, and that scale will come uh, in, in one of two ways. Really, it'll come through us doing acquisitions, or if you're doing much larger, you know, if you're looking at buying larger businesses, it will come through mergers, and those mergers could be either way around. So, yeah. It, uh, One very quick question here, because time is actually up, so, gentlemen. Hi, um, just on the G-Wing intelligence side, who are your main competitors? Um, I think you've got um, social media monitoring tools like um, Brandwatch for Alien 6. Um, we think we're very different from that because we're actually analysing the data. That's, that's one of the reasons we wanted that technology within our business, was to add the smarts to our technology teams. Uh, some of the other products, like Decision, uh, are going up against the Marins and the Kenshus of this world. Uh, but again, actually, we're positioning ourselves in a very different place. We don't want to be trying to compete from a technology stat point of view with the likes of Google. It, it, it's, it's not a battle we want to take on. The technology that we're building is complementary to, to that underlying in bedrock, especially in paid search. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody.